um, just to get a better feeling from what these um, uh, what this data set looks like, I, I converted it so it could be read by and plotted in a three-dimensional viewer. That viewer is available at this URL, which is part of the resources for this class. And um, that viewer allows us to um, take the data and uh, browse it in three dimensions. Um, and it also, this will point out that uh, depending on how you rotate in three dimensions, these different um, clusters actually may, may uh, have different separations. So let's actually see what happens there before we look at the um, All right, so here we have uh, this three-dimensional plotter, PlotViz. It's got these exactly these thousand points, and um, it has them. Um, just tell you how many points there are in each each of the each of the collections: 342, 331, and 327. And if I uh, move my mouse around, I can rotate this section. You can see, depending on how I look at it, like here, it's very clean. Actually, here's where Z is perpendicular. Uh, to the uh, screen, so actually you just get the x, y projection slightly rotated, and so we know already that's pretty clean. Um, in this particular, you know, in these, some of these other ones we're looking at, it's pretty messy. So that all that says is that um, if you want to disentangle what things are going on, and those things are in high dimensions, Looking at two dimensions, or even of course three dimensions, if it's higher than three, may not tell you that very well. In three dimensions, as you're using distance to define your separation, it should be fine. And here we're effectively doing that. So here we can browse it and see, uh, you know, which makes us in. We can see these green ones are rather cleanly separated at the bottom here, and depending on, let's say, here's a very clean separation between uh, the three. Uh, um, segments, three clusters, or three classification groups. So that's that. So you can play with that if you download that software. Now let's go back to the slide. So the first next slide actually just shows a, a, a screen dump of um, actually just what we did. So it actually shows you. Uh, one of the cases, which is very clean, with the z-axis almost directly out of the screen. So you get an x and a y, although it's not exactly, uh, x is not exactly horizontal and y is not exactly vertical, because I was just playing around and then just stopped when I felt I wanted to. Um, so that's uh, that slide. Here's a, you know, here's just another example of a, of the, of this, we're not quite so clean. They are done. Z is a little off the, uh, is uh, entered into the discussion a bit more. And here's a case where actually Y is nearly out of the uh, screen. And so you have X versus Z when the separation is by no means obvious. So that's just a, a, you know, a salutary warning or fun or what, I don't know what you want to call it, but. Except trying to find structure in high dimensional spaces is not so trivial, because that structure can be gotten from dimensions you're not looking at. Uh, now we come on to the next part of this Python, and it points out that the final line in the driver is um, calling a uh, another function dating class test with a with a single argument of the value 0.1. And that one, if you'd actually looked at the Python I'd run, it prints out a few things at the end, which is the so-called total error rate, which is 5% or 0.05, and the number of bad points, which is five. So what is this doing? So this is actually doing something which is pretty important. Namely, it's dividing the data into a, uh, into a set used to classify and a set used to test the classification. And the parameter 0.1 determines how you do that division. And it is such that 0.1 is the fraction of points that you're going to use to do the test, which implies that 0.9 is the fraction that you're going to use to do the uh, 
classification. So that means where you just use Harrington's values for the classification. Uh, this particular code is extremely simple. If you look at dating te class test, it actually takes the uh, first um, fraction, or which is 100 points, because we know it's 1,000 points, and so 0.1 times 1,000 is 100. So it takes the first 100 points and you use them as a test set, and the next 900 points as the classification set. That wouldn't be a good idea if there was some um, sorting if they, were, if they were not randomly sorted. For instance, if this uh, woman who'd done the dating classification had put all the people she disliked at the beginning, then you wouldn't get, wouldn't be very good to put all the, uh, to have a bias in your testing set. Your testing set needs to be unbiased. Therefore, it needs in general, what you'd ought to do is to randomize the points and then choose the first hundred. Um, so the results of this, what it does is it takes those hundred points and it calculates using the KNN classification algorithm with actually three nearest neighbors, and it um, calculates the classification, and it compares the uh, nearest neighbor classification with Harrington's classification, and if they're um, different, it counts up the number of the numbers that are different, and out of the 100 points, 95, uh, get the same answer for the um, between Harrington's classification and the nearest neighbor classification, and uh, five disagree. So that's what the number bad being five is. Uh, and that's the fact that these are not exactly right is almost inevitable, because if you just look at those pictures <coughs> and take a point near the, um, now even the, let's take um, this one where it's clean. No, this is the cleanest one. We take points here which are clean, uh, points um, which are um, at the edges of the regions, whether they're classified uh, as um, one cluster or another is, or one given one classification or another is in the eye of the beholder, is rather ill-defined. And so that's what, that's a, you're bound, you'd expect to get some, uh, some um, error rate there. 